So next is uh, after defining normal for uh, functional dependency, next step is to go for database design. So for that we have different normal forms. So in this video lecture, I'll be going only till definition of keys. So we have to learn all these things, normalization, what is meant by normalization, then what is the use of this practical use for this normal form. Then um, we have to see uh, definition of keys and attributes pass, uh, participating in keys. Then first normal form, second normal form, and third normal form, and then there's BCNF also. But we will study only these three things in this video. So first is normalization. So what do you mean by this normalization of relations? So it was uh, first proposed by code in 1972. So it takes a relation schema through a series of tests, series of tests to certify whether it satisfies certain uh, normal form. So we have certain conditions. Normal form is some kind of conditions. We have certain conditions. And what we do in normalization is we will check whether it satisfies those conditions. If it satisfies some conditions, we will say this is in first normal form. If it satisfies some other condition, we say this tables, these tables are in second normal form. If it satisfies some other condition, we say this table satisfies third normal form. So it is what we do is we will check some, uh, we will conduct some tests on the relations or tables. <coughs> so here we, what we do is top down design. We already seen in the previous video lecture what is this top down design. So in relational database, we usually follow this top-down design methodology. So in top-down design methodology, we start from uh, entity relationship diagrams. And from ER diagrams, we map it to relations. And we have some tables now. What we do is we will check for some conditions. We test for some conditions in these tables. If it satisfies some conditions, we say that this, these tables are in this normal form. So initially code, initially code, that person proposed only three normal forms and these normal forms are first, second and third normal form. And later boys, we uh, later boys and code introduced a new normal form, which is stronger than third normal form. It is known as boys code normal form, boys BCNF. <clears throat> so what do you mean by this normalization? It is actually process of decomposing unsatisfactory bad relations by breaking up the attributes into smaller relations. So what we do in normalization is we have some tables. We have already designed these tables by converting that ER into uh, tables. So we have some tables. Now what we do is we check each table to satisfy some condition. If a particular table, employee table is not satisfying conditions, then what we do is we decompose it or we split it into two or three tables again. So that employee table will be split into two or three, maybe three or four tables. It will be split into two or three tables. So as said, it satisfies that condition. Then we check for another set of conditions. If it is not satisfying those conditions, then again we split those tables. Like right. So it is a uh, technique of decomposing these bad relations by breaking up their attributes into smaller relations. It's a process of analyzing the given relation schemas based on their functional dependencies and primary keys to achieve the desirable properties. So uh, we it is to achieve the desirable properties. So we have already seen in the previous lecture what are the desired pro properties. One is it has to minimize the redundancy. So redundancy should be minimized. Then by minimizing it, we have to minimize this insertion, deletion, and update anomalies also. So this is the process of normalizing. By analyzing these relations, we will be trying to minimize this redundancy, and also we will be trying to minimize this insertion, deletion, and update anomalies. So what do you mean by this normal form? Now we have what we have seen normalization. So normalization is actually decomposing unsatisfactory relations. If there is some bad relation, we will try to split it into two or three small relations. So next is normal form. So normal form means, uh, refers to the highest normal form condition that it meets and indicates the degree to which it has been normalized. So if we say the tables are, or the relation is in second normal form, it means that 
it satisfies the, all the conditions that is specified in the second normal form. So this table is normalized to second normal form, or this table is normalized to third normal form, like that we say. It means it satisfies all these conditions. So this condition is based on using keys and functional dependencies of a relation. And it satisfies whether relation schema is in that particular normal form. It is some condition. So additionally, when we normalize, it should satisfy these two properties also. We have seen in the previous lecture, what do you mean by this lossless joint or non-additive joint? We have already seen in the previous lecture, uh, when we perform this decomposition, we will be splitting into two relations. We have two relations in our hand. We will be decomposing. If the, it's, it does not satisfy some condition, we will be splitting as relation into two relations. Now, after some time, we may need to access some data from this two relations. What we do, the two relations, then what we have to do is we have to join these two relations. When we join these two relations, there should not be any spurious tuples. We have already seen in the previous lecture, spurious tuples will be generated. Such spurious tuples are unwanted tuples. So we should not have unwanted tuples. So that is known as lossless join condition. And also dependencies should be preserved. So initially we have some functional dependency between some attributes. Then all those functional dependencies should be preserved even after doing this normalization. So these two conditions should be satisfied. Lossless join and dependency preserve. And lossless join is a mandatory condition. Dependency preservation is not mandatory. We may have to sacrifice some dependency preservation. So we will learn this lossless join and dependency preservation in the next chapter. So now we have to we have to we will be seeing only these normal forms. So what is the use of this normal forms? So normalization will result in designs that are of high quality and which meets the desirable properties. So it will be of high quality. High quality means redundancy will be reduced. So these constraints on which they are based are hard to understand or to detect. So these constraints are on which these normal forms are based are hard to understand or to detect it is difficult. So we have to need, we need not normalize to the highest possible normal form. So actually there is uh, first normal form, second normal form, third, then BCNF is there. After that there is um, fourth normal form is there, then fifth normal form is there. We need not normalize to the highest normal form. We usually normalize up to third or maximum up to BCNF. It's not necessary that you should normalize to the highest normal form. In the syllabus, you need you have to study only up to BCNF. Fourth normal form and uh, fifth normal form is not there in your syllabus. So usually up to th third normal form and BCNF. And for, for normal form, you usually sometimes we'll do this fourth normal form also. Then there is denormalization procedure. Denormalization is the process of storing the join of higher normal form relations as a base relation, which is in a normal, lower normal form relation. So denormalization is the opposite of this normalization. In normalization, what we do is we decompose it into two or three smaller relations. Denormalization is actually storing the base relation, that is the big, the big relation that is uh, from which we have normalized that relation will be stored. So it is the opposite of normalization. One more topic we will see in this video lecture, it is about uh, definition of some definition. So we have already seen this definition in the first module, I think. So, so first we will define what is a super key. So these definitions are important to understand this normalization procedure. So this is a recap to the earlier definition. So super key. So super key of a relation R, A1, A2, etc., AN is a set of attributes S. So a super key is a set of attributes which is a subset of this relation. Uh, it is a subset of R with a property that no two tuples T1 and T2 in any legal relational state R of R will have same value of S. So no two rows will have same value of S. That is a thing, super key. Well, if, 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 if S is a super key, then no two rows in the table will have same values in the S part. Then we will define what is a key. 
So key is a super key. Key is a super key with the additional property that removal of any attribute from K will cause K not to be super key anymore. So key is the minimal super key. We have already seen in the previous uh, module. What is this super key and key? So super key is actually it is, it is used to uniquely identify and key is minimal super key. That is, if we remove some attribute from key, then K will not be any, will K will not be able to uniquely identify a particular one. So we will see some example. In the employee table, social security number is a key of employee, whereas SSN is a key, uh, is a super key. SSN comma e name, that combination is also a super key. SSN comma e name comma birth date, that combination is also a super key. But this this these things are not keys because removal of e name will also result in a key. Or e name and birth date from this this set will result in a key. So SSN uh, key means minimal super key. These are all super keys, but they are not keys. Here SSN is only the key of this relation. <coughs> then we have already seen what do you mean by this candidate key. So if a relation schema has more than one key, then each is called a candidate key. In certain relations, we may have more than one key. Then all those keys are known as candidate key. For example, in your student table, I have already explained this in the class. So, in a student table, we can have more than one key. For example, admission number is one of the keys. Then, roll number is a, another key. If you are storing Aadhaar number, it is also a key. So, all these are known as candidate keys. And one among the candidate key is kept as primary key. And the other keys will be known as secondary key. Then another definition, what do you mean by this prime attribute? So a prime attribute must be a member of some candidate key. If it is a, if that attribute is a member of any of the candidate keys, then it is known as prime attribute. Non-prime attribute is the opposite. It's not a prime attribute. That is, it is not a member of any of the candidate keys. Then it is known as non-prime attribute. So these definitions are important. What is the super key? What is this key? What is candidate key? Candidate key means there may be several keys in a relation and then all these keys are known as candidate keys. One among the candidate keys is, will be kept as a primary key and the other keys will be known as secondary key. Prime attribute. Prime attribute must be member of some candidate key. If, it is a, if the attribute is member of any of the candidate keys, then it is known as a prime attribute. Then non-prime attribute is there, which is not member of any of the candidate keys. So in this example, if you see, social security number is a primary key of this attribute uh, is in this table. Primary key is of this table and SSN is the prime attribute of this table. Other attributes are non-prime attribute. We will take this table. So this combination, D number and D location combination is the primary key. And we have only two prime attributes. D number is a prime attribute. D location is another prime attribute. In this table, SSN comma P number, SSN comma P number, that combination is a primary key. So the prime attributes of this table are SSN and P number. And ours is the non-prime attribute. So we will see some other examples. The student example, we have admission number, register number, Aadhaar number, roll number, name, date of birth, address, phone number. We will store some other details also. Here admission number is kept as the primary key. So we have other keys. These are all candidate keys. Register number, Aadhaar number, roll number. All these are candidate keys. They can be used to uniquely identify a particular person. So these keys are known as secondary keys. Since this is a primary key, other keys are known as secondary keys. So admission number comma name, this is also a super key, this is a super key, admission number comma name, that combination is a super key, but it is not key because if we remove name, we can uniquely identify a particular person. So admission number comma name is a super key, but it is not a key of this relation. Another example, register number comma phone number, it is a super key of that relation, but removal of phone number will result in a key, so it is not a uh, super key. Uh, it is not a key, but it is a super key. Register number, comma, phone number is a super key of this relation. 
another example if admission number comma name comma date of birth this combination is a super key we can uniquely identify a person but this is not the key of that relation because by removing name and date of birth we can use admission number alone to identify the table or all the rows so we will stop this so we have same functional dependency what is mean by functional dependency and we have also seen definition for keys so it is important what you have to understand what is super key uh, what is key then what is candidate key what is secondary key and also we have to understand what do you mean by this prime attribute and also non prime attribute so in this table non prime attributes are name date of birth address phone number and prime attributes are admission number register number aadhar number roll number are all prime attributes so we'll stop with this thank you